Hello, I'm Ron. Welcome back to another edition of Classic Model Trains. Today we're going to go through decaling 101. Learning introduction on how to put some decals on. Remember that 1945 Varney, that A and that B unit that I was working on? Well, I, I, I got the decals for them. A little story behind that. But we're going to put them on in this video, finish up this transformation. You know, I needed a good project to learn to do some painting and some decaling on. And this one was just right. Now that picture, the, the really pretty picture that I showed you, that's a Broadway Limited's imports. Oh my god, it's got so much features on it, probably doesn't even need you there to operate it. But that dang thing's like 400 bucks. And I just don't, no, oh, I just can't do that. I've got like 60 bucks into this Varney with this A and B, purchasing the locomotives, shipping them, painting them, decals. They're gonna, they're, they're, it's, it's pretty close, I gotta say. I, you know, they started off looking like this. And, and, you know, now they're going to look like this. If you want to see how we restored the locomotives mechanically, here's the link to that video. It was posted about a month ago. Today, though, Introduction to Decaling 101 for me and for you. <laughs> Let's get started. I was stalled out because I needed to find these particular decals right here. I, I couldn't find them anywhere. And in the video at the end, you know, the comments, there's this nice feller named Robert H., he left a comment for me and said that I found these things over at Mainline Hobbies out in Pennsylvania. They had their entire inventory online, so I was able to hop online, found them. Thank you, Robert, for finding these things for me, sending a shout out so I could pick them up. We are going to take these locomotives, we're going to walk through how to do the decal, kind of a 101 kind of thing. It's a 101 for me, because last time I decaled anything was on a plastic airplane back when I was eight, and I, I wasn't very good back then. I don't know how I'm going to be now. So stick around. Let's see what we can make these things look like. I just want to go over some of the basic tools that you need for putting these micro scale decals on. Micro set will be the first one that you use for you know a liquid to apply the decal, and then the micro cell makes the decal once it's on look better. Toothpicks, you know, to use as a small tool for moving decals around. Cotton swabs for absorbing moisture. Brushes for applying the micro set and the micro saw. Straight edge, very, very sharp razor blade. Cause you gotta get in here and you gotta, you gotta cut these little buggers out. To, so, you know, one at a time. Paper towels, need to have some paper towels. Also the body of the locomotive needs to be in a gloss. So I painted this, I think I just painted it with a, a primer, I, I think it was, a white, I can't, it's been a long time. And it's a flat that I painted it as, so I had to put a gloss coat on it to get the decals to do their job and then of course once the decaling is all done it could be resprayed into a mat if you don't like glossy glossy locomotives so some of the things that you need to decal well since i didn't look at my picture close enough when i painted this fuel tank black the steps are supposed to be black too so now i get to sit around here with my hand hand painting and i get to hand paint these things all gentle like and stuff like that <laughs> Mistake number one, overlooking things. So we're fixing to put a little decals on this here B unit. I've done some decaling already, you know, so I can get my practice on. So that way when I go to show you guys, you know, I sort of know what I'm talking about. I find that this cardboard stock that these decals are on is thick. So when you go to cut it out, you you really got to get some pushing down going on. I've got a bland, brand new blade in this and you got you to gotta work at it. These are pretty straightforward and easy to put on. 70 degree water. We're going to soak it in here for about a minute and we're waiting for that to happen. We're going to take some of this micro set. I think that the boys in the marketing department should have come up with better names than micro set and micro sol because you kind of forget which one to put on first. So I've decided since this one is blue and B comes in the alphabet before red and are that's what i'm doing to help myself remember use the blue one first use the red one when you're all said and done and then i also even wrote a little number on the side and you know in case i forgot about that and then as time goes by i see that they've already got numbers on them from the factory one use number one first use number two after the fact so i've got three fail safes going on here trying to prevent me from blowing it High quality brush. I'm gonna put some microsol and I, or micro set, uh, sorry. I'm gonna put this right in the center where I want this Burlington name to be. I'm gonna center it up above this. And that little bugger's ready to come off because I managed to slide it on the thing. Use your brush. You know, everybody's got their own way of doing it. This is what I'm going to do. 
Now them thinner pinstripes, they don't come off that easy at all. So I'm gonna move it around way more than I should. And I'm gonna sight, I'm sighting down it this way. Like when you're, when you're sighting in a straight two by four, you wanna make sure that this is put in there straight. I want it centered up between this fuel tank right here. Once it gets kind of close to what you think you might want, I use a Q-tip and I pick up all the water. And I always bump into it, and I'm always having to place it back. And you, you know, you're always, always it's beginners, I guess. I've just got beginner stuff going on. Once I'm satisfied with it being straight, I find if you set it straight up and down, the water will kind of leak out from behind it. Just some. This is just the mistakes that I'm doing today. This, this is not the, the you know, the do all Bible. Now it's seated down quite nicely. Just in a little bit of time, I'm gonna go ahead and put this little F3 emblem on it, little guy. Now all the directions I've looked at, all the pictures I've looked at, seems like the B units don't have any numbers on them. This is what the other side looks like here. With my broken decals, I'm gonna have to try to do something with, cleaning it up. Ugh, frustration. Push it off with my brush. Now we got way too much water. Over here, I can absorb it with the Q-tip. Move this fella around until I'm happy with where he's at. Make sure it's square, flat, where you want it, plumb with the world. Let that sit for just a little bit. Now we'll come in with the Microsol, the red stuff. Number two, second one, paint it over the top of the decal and it makes it super soft and suck in to all the rivets of the details and it hides the, the uh, outline of the decal. Now, eight hours later, I can touch this. Hmm. I thought a nose herald would be quite hard to put on, but it ended up going on really quite easy. So here's a good example of the decal before the microsol is put on. The decal is going over these porthole windows. The definition is missing from them because they're just going up and down over it like a sheet that's pulled tight. The microsol, the red stuff, number two, it loosens that decal, makes it soft, and makes it where it'll sit like this side over here. I've eyeballed down this. We've got this in place, so I am going to microsol this one. And I have found that I need to usually do two coats on this big of a thick pinstripe in order to get it to seat in and look good. That's it. I can't microsol it anymore or else it'll start to smear it because it's already probably starting to make it soft. Eight hours later, come back to it, put another coat on. Classic model trains. How about this week's classic model? You guys know who this, this young lass is right here? If you do, type it down in the comments below. First time I did this, I read the directions completely, said soak it in water for 10 seconds, pull it out, and then let it sit there and soak, you know, for a minute, and then start working on applying the decal. And these things are fragile. Fragile, fragile, fragile. I can see right now that we're gonna have a crack right there. And I'm gonna let this soak. I found that it works a little better for a minute. There's gonna be a crack right there too. So this dang thing is going to have to go on in several pieces. I just, this is really quite frustrating. Tweezers to dig this little bugger out. I forgot to put the micro set on. And it seems no matter how easily I try to take this decal off, it just broke and broke and broke and broke. And I spent a phenomenal amount of time trying to get everything to line up and make it look really nice. And it still really didn't work out. On the very first stripe that I laid down in here, I attempted to cut out for these porthole windows and it really damaged the decal. So that's why I decided just to, I painted them. I just took some flat black paint, went around, went around the window edge right there. And that's the best that I could do. Cause I'd managed to ruin one of these big stripes and the very first pinstripe, I, or one of the pinstripes I, when I was cutting them out, I got too close and cut into the other one and oh my God. So everything's done. But I don't, I don't have a stripe for this side, the big one, the little one. That, mean, that means I gotta find another dang set. So I guess the first time you go to decal something, you know, buy two sets. That way if you blow it, you've got extras. Another mistake that ended up happening with these details underneath this big red stripe right here, when the Microsol was used and it shrunk it, some places it shrunk it so much that it actually tore. And then the white 
showed through. I went to the Walmart and I bought every dang color of red that they had to try to make sure I could match up. And then I had to come through with a brush with nine hairs on it and just carefully put a little bit of paint on the red to fix that because it, it looked bad and now it's not as as bad. Now I can't paint pinstripes because I drink a bunch of coffee and my shake. So I've got some areas where I'm just gonna have to live with it. But it was just tough, tough getting these big long pinstripes put on. Oh man, let's get on to putting the hand railings on. Getting ready to do some painting on all the little details on there. I got all my hand rails here. Just clean them up with the ultrasonic cleaner. I put them in one of these little t-ball things, keep them all together, pulled them out, dried them off, stuck them in some of this little foam to keep them upright. Now I'm gonna paint them with the color of the locomotive. Hopefully it doesn't eat up this foam. <laughs> I guess I'll find out. The railings had came out real nice after I got done painting them and it didn't, it didn't eat the foam, the paint didn't. Before I went to install them, I used a pin vise to come by and clean up all these holes right here of any paint that might be in them, or if the hole had closed up, you know, for whatever reason, just to make it easier. And I got these really long needle nose pliers and I would get them up in there and get them figured out and use, a, you know, lots of little tools to push those in. And then of course, when you're handling these things with, with metal tools, the paint chips. So I took the spray paint and I sprayed it on a board and then I used my little brush and I just came by and I touched them up just a little bit where I where I touched the rails. These two here are not on because I've got to wait and get another decal set to finish this side up over here. But this is what they end up looking like once they're all on. These were all handmade and all these holes were hand drilled in here by the guy that used to own this back in 62 or something like that. It's easy enough to add these on, just drill little holes, bend you up some railings out of some brass stock, and let her buck. Stuff is like 0.02 two in diameter. Now that the railings are on, got our Katie couplers in, bodies are mounted back in. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, remember that drive line that I was missing? Well, some of the fellers sat there and said, use a, there were so many good ideas that came in, use a big pen tube. Well, that, that sent me, you know, yeah, that's a great idea. But this little acrylic tube right here, they, it's used as packaging for aluminum pieces that I found at the hobby shop. And these were empty and they're throwing them away. So I cut a drive line one and five eighths of an inch in length, used the Dremel tool, cut a groove down it this side here, rotated it 90 degrees, cut a groove down on the other side. And now we've got ourselves a functioning drive line. So now we're back up to eight wheel drive on this one. This, this just keeps getting better and better. If you're in the hobby shop and you decide that you need to buy one of these F7 dress up kits, they won't fit the Varney at all. The way that the windshield is shaped on this one, which is more prototypical than these windshields that are in here, they, they it just, no, it didn't fit. My portholes were filled in, so I didn't bother with the, with the porthole glass. The only thing that really worked was the horns and the lens that I put in up there. And then other than that, these, these are gonna have to go to work on somebody else because they're not gonna work on this. Now, if the holes weren't already drilled, you could buy one of these and use these these preformed ones drill the holes to match these because these didn't fit those holes right there. Lots of little, little problems. I'd also ordered up a new weight for one of them. And this thing is suffering really bad from zinc pest. And you can see that it's cracking along through here. Well, it's also almost an eighth of an inch wider. It's just expanding. And I tried sanding it down to get it to fit the body. But I figure if this thing is expanding over time, we do not want to put that in the body and then forget about it. And then two years later, I come and the bodies are all cracked out. So if you got any weight that's got a sign of zinc pest in it, throw it away. Just because it's going to damage your locomotive. Let's put these up on the tracks. See if I got some cool passenger cars that we can pull them around with. <laughs> 